I want to get to like my favorite part of the talk. And this is this is the effortful part. This is like exercise. There is absolutely nothing that I have found in all of my, you know, reading of the literature that is more powerful and potent at delaying every related aspect to aging and age-related disease than exercise, um, particularly vigorous intensity exercise. And when I say vigorous intensity, I mean the kind of exercise that you're doing and you really can't have a conversation. You can't really talk to someone while you're doing it because you're so out of breath while you're doing that exercise. Uh, for people that wear heart rate monitors, we're talking about 80, 85% max heart rate. You're getting, you're getting into that zone or more. That is vigorous intensity exercise. And I want to start by talking about cardiorespiratory fitness, which is something that it is a marker of it's it's a marker of our our, I would say, life expectancy, mortality risk, dare to say longevity. Uh, we know we know that eventually, you know, as we're aging, we're going on this cliff. Our, our cardiorespiratory fitness is going down. And so you want to get as high up as you can. You want to have the highest cardiorespiratory fitness as you can, because that cliff will come. And the higher up you start, the longer it's going to take to get to that cliff. And so VO2 max, the maximum amount of oxygen that you can take in during maximal exercise is the way cardiorespiratory fitness is measured. We know that people that are have a low cardiorespiratory fitness, if they go anywhere above being like the low, like let's say they go to just the low normal range, that's associated with just a two-year increased life expectancy. If they go from like below low to more of a high, then that's like a five-year increased life expectancy. And there's been some researchers out there that have that have calculated each unit increase in your VO2 max and your cardiorespiratory fitness is associated. So for each unit, which would be one milliliter per kilogram per minute, that correlates to about 45 day life extension. So for each unit you're going up, you're about you're gaining about 45 days of life expectancy. There have been a, a few studies now, one of them here, this is the JAMA one. Um, that have shown people that are in the more elite level, like the real high cardiorespiratory fitness. Again, they've got a five-year increased life expectancy, but they also have a 80% lower uh, mortality risk than people in the low cardiorespiratory fitness group. Um, and what was interesting about this study is that even people with a high cardiorespiratory fitness, if you compared them to the elite People in the elite group still had about a 20% lower mortality risk than people in the high. So it just keeps going up. Uh, but what was so interesting to me about that study was that people in the low cardiorespiratory fitness group had a mortality risk that was either comparable or worse than smoking, having type 2 diabetes, having cardiovascular disease, right? All these things that we know are terrible. Well, guess what? Being sedentary, being physically inactive is a disease. And we need to start treating it as a disease because it is a disease. So that that basically the cardiorespiratory fitness was predicting, you know, mortality risk like these other diseases that people know about as being terrible, right? People don't talk about cardiorespiratory fitness being terrible. We know, um, and this kind of brings it back to vigorous exercise, There, the question is, how do you improve your cardiorespiratory fitness? Where any exercise is really, especially in you know, aerobic training, is really going to improve cardiorespiratory fitness. However, um, when you get to a certain point, you know, people that are even doing the physical activity guidelines, so let's say they're doing like two and a half hours per week of moderate intensity, you know, moderate intensity physical activity. So this would be the kind of exercise that you can maybe have a conversation sort of like you're breathy, but you can sort of talk, right? You're not like so you're not like going all you're not really going that that hard. Um, you're still working, but not as hard as you would if you were doing more vigorous type of exercise. Um, about 40% of people that are doing that two and a half hours a week cannot improve their cardiorespiratory fitness unless they engage in high intensity interval training, unless they mix in that vigorous intensity exercise. And it's not really known why that is. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the challenge that you're putting on your cardiovascular system, on your lungs, your muscular system, your brain, everything that you're, you know, when you when you increase that challenge like you do when you're engaging in vigorous intensity exercise, 
the adaptations to that are also greater. And so the adaptations being you can transport oxygen, you know, to throughout your system quicker, right, to bring it to your muscles faster. And so and that's kind of the the thought right now is that's what's happening is that basically it's just the the stress when the stress is stronger, the adaptation is is also stronger. <clears throat> Uh, there's a variety of different protocols out there, high-intensity interval training protocols that can improve cardiorespiratory fitness. The longer the interval, the more robust the effect on improving cardiorespiratory fitness. So high-intensity interval training is referring to these short bursts of like more vigorous intensity exercise followed by, you know, like a more light exercise recovery. There's so many protocols out there. And honestly, all of them do improve cardiorespiratory fitness. If you're really wanting to like get a, an outsized effect, then you're going to start getting into the minutes long interval. So the Norwegian 4x4 is one I like to talk about because there's so many publications out there showing that it can improve cardiorespiratory fitness. So that the Norwegian 4x4 was something that's practiced by these Norwegian skiing group. And essentially, they're doing four minutes interval and it's on a stationary bike and they're going as hard as they can and maintain for that four minutes. So they're not going all out because there's no way you can do that. But they're just going as hard as they can to maintain for that four minutes. And then they have a three minute recovery where they're going super, super light. They're letting their heart rate come down to recover and then they go back at it again. So that's repeated four times. It's a four by four. That is a really good way to improve cardiorespiratory fitness, but it's not the only way. You can do a minute on, a minute off. You can do 30 seconds on, 20 seconds off. You can do 20 seconds on, 10 seconds. Like Tabatas, all these things do improve cardiorespiratory fitness. Um, it's just the longer the interval, the more robust the effect. And I do want to talk about uh, Dr. Ben Levine's study on reverse, reversing cardiac aging. So the reason I like to talk about this study is because it included the Norwegian 4x4 and also included a lot of vigorous intensity exercise. And essentially, um, Ben took about, you know, 50-year-olds that were sedentary, so they weren't physically active, but they didn't have any other diseases, and put them on this intense training protocol for two years. It was progressive. They didn't just right out the gate start doing the Norwegian 4x4. They work their way up, right? When you have someone that's not active and then you're putting them on a, on a pretty intense training protocol, you have to progressively get there. And so by the end of like the first six months, people then started doing the Norwegian 4x4 once a week. They were doing 30 minutes of, I would say, you know, getting to that 75% max heart rate um, zone for their their more vigorous, cl closer to vigorous intensity exercise. They're doing it about three times a week. In total, they were they were working out about five hours a week, and a large portion of that was vigorous intensity exercise. They also did a moderate intensity exercise and a little bit of resistance training. The control group only did some kind of yoga ish type of you know exercise, and after two years their hearts were imaged compared to the baseline. So as we age, our hearts are aging as well. And our hearts shrink with age, and they also get stiffer with age. And this affects our cardiovascular disease risk. Um, it also affects the ability of our hearts to, our, you know, being able to improve cardiorespiratory fitness. But it affects our cardiovascular disease risk. You don't want a stiff heart, and you don't want it to keep shrinking and so what happened after the two years of that intense exercise protocol is these 50-year-olds reversed the aging of their heart by essentially 20 years. So their hearts grew and they became more flexible and they looked structurally, if you looked at them, by all the imaging techniques and all the probing, probing and stuff that's done, they looked more like a 30-year-old's heart. And I'm very much glossing over a lot of this data, but essentially the important thing is that it's not too late to start working out and it will have a profound effect if you put in the time and the effort on the way you're aging. <clears throat>